Nice intro of Mr. Driller too, so you guys can see how cool it is. It's another peaceful day, isn't it, Poochie? Woof! And now for a special bulletin. Huh? Woof? The world is being overrun by colored blocks. They are appearing from the depths of the earth. In <coughs> India. America. And even Egypt. The world is in peril. Many cities are completely covered by these blocks. What did he say? Well, looks like I'd better take care of this. Okay, see you later. Good luck, Matt. And Mr. Driller 2 is a puzzle platform game. Uh, I randomly found out about this game. I remember seeing um, like the Mr. Driller face on a Dreamcast game and I was like wow I wonder what that is and I finally got this game and it's, it's, it's a cool game it's a puzzle platform and I believe it's a spiritual sequel uh, to the Dig Dug series if you guys are old school remember those games so basically in this game you go around the world you drill into the ground and then, I mean you drill and drill and drill uh, you have to watch out for obstacles you know you don't want anything to squish you because that's how you get killed in this game and also um, you have to watch your air supplement because the deeper you go the harder it is to, to breathe. As far as I know, this game seems to be exclusive to the, uh, the part two at least, exclusive to the Game Boy Advance. A lot of fun. Um, I I got killed a lot. You know, I was good at this when I played it back in the day, but uh, now I was just kind of, I was kind of like not doing as well as I was, but I guess because I just, I'm just a little bit rusty. But the game's really addicting and a lot of fun. Uh, I have not played the two-player mode, but I don't know how it plays, but I should probably get a second cart for it just in case. So here we have Steel Empire. Uh, Steel Empire, I, so for some reason I always call this game Steam Empire because it seems like it's, it's steampunk pretty much. But other than that, uh, I chose this game because this is an unknown uh, shoot-em-up game for the Game Boy Advance. And the game originally came out on the Sega Genesis back in the day, and uh, I... I bought this one because I thought it would be more of an upgrade since the Game Boy Advance is a 32-bit system. Now the sound quality is not there like in the Genesis version. Uh, even though the Game Boy Advance is a 32-bit system, it's just they kind of like, I don't know what they were thinking with the sound chip, but the game still does sound good though. It's just the Genesis version sounds a little bit better. Of course I wanted to uh, talk about this game because a lot of people do not know that it is on that there was a Game Boy Advance version of the game. And, uh, you know, it's, well, from, gosh, I don't even want to say that, but, you know, I was going to say it's not too expensive, but I don't know what people's, what's expensive to people or not. But uh, anyways, I think it's a game worth having. Uh, lot, it's a, it's a shoot 'em up that, you know, adds more to the genre, you know, like with extra moves, like uh, being able to shoot behind you. Uh, just a lot of cool things, like special moves. Uh, and it, it just really seems like a game that takes its time, you know, it doesn't seem like it's a, in a big hurry. It scrolls pretty slow, but that's only only on the first couple of levels. It goes faster later. But still, you know, it kind of is one of those shoot 'em up games that kind of weed you in, which is nice. You know, you don't, you just take everything slow, even though everything's coming at you real fast. But still, you know, uh, a, a really good shoot 'em up game for the system. Oh, hell no! Astro Boy The Omega Factor. This is the probably the best Astro Boy game you will ever play. It is a pretty sick. Funny story about this game is that uh, when it came out, I actually bought the its uh, older brother, which was the uh, PS2 version of the game. Uh, I thought that version was awesome. I played the demo for it. Uh, didn't get high ratings in the books, uh, but I thought it was a great game, but I had never played this one. Then I finally played this game, and I was like, wow, dude, what was I thinking? I should have got this game. This game is sick. This is from the makers of uh, Guardian Heroes and uh, Gunstar Heroes uh, Treasure, and you could tell right away that they put their heart into this game, and pretty much all their games. Uh, Astro Boy, just, man, I can't say enough about this game. It, it's it's like an action beat-em-up 
and it also it plays like a shoot 'em up as well. You get special moves to fight to fight bosses with. A lot of enemies coming out on the screen at once. It seems like it has that mode. Uh, what's that mode seven thing for Super Nintendo games? Like when things just come at the screen at you. It's just stuff like that that you really notice. The game uh, never feels like a monotonous. You know, it changes things up. It keeps it fresh. You know, you never feel like a, like it's just getting boring. You know, this game keeps the pace up. With great boss battles and just like like beautiful backgrounds, just and great music too. I'm gonna go ahead and say it, man. I feel like Astro Boy for the Game Boy Advance, the Omega Factor, is a, like a hybrid game. You know, it's like two games in one, pretty much. You know, shoot 'em up part, an action platform part. You know, it's very well done. Um, I can't say enough about this game. This is a must-have for people who have the Game Boy Advance system. Uh, you know what? I'm not gonna say the price because I don't know what's going for. It shouldn't be that much if you're going for cart. But uh, if you have a Game Boy Advance or you're an avid collector for that system, this is a must-have for that, for that system. The King of Fighters uh, EX2 Howling Blood. Uh, oh man, I remember when I first got this game and I was amazed at how well it played on the Game Boy Advance. Uh, I had the first one as well. The first one was good too, but there were, the sound quality was really bad in the first one, so that kind of like... That hurts the game when the sound, the music is not really flowing. You can barely hear it because you guys know about the Game Boy Advance as uh, the sound chip. It's not that great. But anyways, uh, back to this game. Very well done game. I mean, seriously, you could be a serious a fighting game person and play this game still to this day. I mean, it's that well done. Even though you only use four buttons, uh, I still think that's enough for a fighting game at least. Special moves are easy to pull off. There's some exclusive characters to the game like Mo. As you can see, <laughs> I did some damage with her. And uh, one of my favorite things, this game actually has a really cool last boss, you know what I mean? Now, we all know about the SNK bosses, and they're pretty, like, uh, they're just broken. Uh, but, I mean, if you know how to get past them, man, they're, they're pretty easy, you know, and they're fun to beat, you know. And uh, this guy, Shinobu, I think that's how you pronounce his name, or how you pronounce his name. He's uh, one of those ones that's... Well, I'm not even, you know what, I'm not even, I'm not even making it look easy. He's tough, but uh, once you get past the gimmick, man, he's pretty easy, I think. But anyways, if you like fighting games and, and you want a fighting game on the Game Boy Advance, look no further than the King of Fighters. Uh, great game. Even the first one is good, too, if you can get past the whole sound chip thing with the sound quality. Uh, lots of fun. It just really feels like a full-fledged King of Fighters game. The game also has its own its own exclusive story mode, so I, I know a lot of fighting people are not interested in story modes. I am because it gives you that motivation. You know, what am I fighting for? You know what I mean? You gotta want to you gotta like your character for you to feel their pain. You know, you want to want them to, to win. So uh, I think fighting well story mode in a fighting game is very important. So uh, this game shows that too, man. All right, so here we have Metal Slug Advance. Uh, when you talk about the Metal Slug series. A lot of people don't really bring this game up, but I'm, I'm wondering, is it because they don't really know about it? So uh, this game is uh, was exclusive to the Game Boy Advance. It's only one player, unfortunately, but that still doesn't take away from the fun. Uh, you play as a new recruit. Uh, they, you've been trained. You're ready to start your mission. Uh, the, the veteran uh, Metal Slug characters like Marco and Afio and all those guys, they're, they're in the game, but they only make cameo appearances in this one. This game gives you a life bar, and uh, when you find food, that's how you replenish your health. Uh, in the other Metal Slug games, like, like you would get food, but you only get points for it. But this game, you get life, so that's definitely something you need to keep up if you want to survive in this game. Uh, if you get knocked off a pit in this game, though, that will take, take, a full, that take your whole life away. So make sure not to get knocked back into a pit or anything. So another big note about this game is that it has an auto fire button that you can set up so make sure you do that because the Game Boy Advance though the controls are really good I mean I like how the control setup is it doesn't seem like it would fit to keep tapping on a button to shoot all the time you know for a game like this you know uh, so I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure that's why they put that option in here so make sure you turn that button on or turn or turn that option on excuse me and uh, so you want to keep constantly tapping the, the fire button because I was doing it at first and it was pretty annoying yeah, so let me let me know what you guys think about Metal Slug Advance. Uh, did you did you find out about it because of the video, or did you already know about it? Are you a fan of the game? You know, uh, I, I just like I said, I don't hear people talking about it. And it's a fantastic game. A, a definitely a must-have for the Game Boy Advance. If you have a Game Boy Advance, you need this game in your life. And uh, yeah, that's Metal Slug in a nutshell. So SD Gundam Force is one of the last games uh, I will 
you know, I won't say one of the last games I got for the Game Boy Advance. That's like, this is probably like 20 games ago. But it's one of the more, uh, one of the new ones that I just found out about. Like, like I never knew this game existed. I heard it's based off an anime series. Uh, well, of course, Gundam is based off an anime series. But it's based off of like a, a cutesy one or a chibi one. Whatever people call those things now. Uh, the first level starts out as a, like a, like a shoot 'em up level. Uh, or, or maybe you could call it a run and gun level. I don't know. Uh, lots of fun though because you could change between uh, two, well, three different uh, mobile suits. So one of the suits uh, is good at throwing projectile attacks. Uh, that's good for like the scrolling levels. Uh, one of the other suits is good at like fast melee attacks. Uh, and the third suit, I can't re really remember what it's good at. It has it's like close hand combat with the other the other suit, but. Uh, yeah, it felt it felt like it was more a melee thing, uh, but any anyways, you can switch these suits out at any time. Uh, really cool, uh, depending on your situation. If you need a melee fighter, you can just switch out to a melee guy. I remember when I first told Jason about this game, where I actually showed him because we did a pickups video, or no, it was a Game Boy Advance Hidden Gems video, and he looked at this game and said, "I must have it," and he bought it immediately. Sad, the sad to say that a lot of people don't know about this game, but it's a pretty cool game that you might want on the system. It's not going to win any awards, but uh, it's going to win uh, your heart for fun factor. Gradius Galaxies, uh, another shoot 'em up for the system that a lot of people I don't think know about. Uh, the Gradius series is an old school shoot 'em up series. It's been around for years. Um, I <laughs> I was never really good at the games. Uh, I I kind of they were kind of too slow paced for me, but they actually pick up during gameplay. But I decided to get this one because I felt like it was like kind of like a, a, a new start for me. Uh, first off, the graphics are, are really nice looking. I love the background, how the sun is rising in the background as you're scrolling through the level. Gradius is a game that when you get killed, it actually uh, starts you back at a checkpoint. That I don't really like shoot 'em ups that are like that, but uh, I understand why it is like that. You know, this is an old school type shoot 'em up but it just puts you in a situation when you need to get your upgrades again. You know, you can find yourself in a messed up situation if you're fighting a boss and you don't have all the upgrades you could have had at the beginning of the level because you had to start at a checkpoint and you missed some things. But that just shows you that this is a game that you have to get good at. So, uh, Greatest Galaxies, check it out. Here's Klonoa 2, the Dream Champ Tournament. Uh, I was happy to get this game because I actually played the first two Klonoa games on a PS1, PS2. Uh, everybody remembers Klonoa 1 for having that sad, sad ending. And I, I won't deny it's a sad ending, but I actually thought that Klonoa 2 for the PS2 had a sadder ending because Klonoa realized what he was and what his job was. But anyway, I won't go into that because it gets me all sad. But the, the Game Boy Advance games seem more upbeat when it comes to uh, like what, what your goal is and the endings and the characters you meet in it. Uh, this one right here, uh, it, it plays pretty much like the, the older games. You know, nothing nothing has changed. This is pretty much more of the same, which is which is pretty much a good thing, you know. You don't really want this game to change too much from what it was. It's a very excellent uh, platform game. I actually consider this the better of the two on the Game Boy Man, so, but definitely both of them are worth getting, but I thought this one would be, be the one we should talk about. Bubble Bobble Old and New is definitely a game I don't hear people talking about for the Game Boy Advance. It's bas basically uh, a new Bubble Bobble game, well, basically like a, a fresh coat of paint, I would say, uh, for a Bubble Bobble series, and, and it also comes with the original uh, arcade release for it. Uh, but I'll go into a little bit about that later. I kind of think there was a missed opportunity here. Uh, Bubble Bobble, uh, the new version, could have been something different. You know what I mean? It's just, I, I mean, a revised version of a game is cool, but I think they could have just did a lot more to it, you know, uh, or changed some, something. I don't know. But uh, they decided to play it safe, you know, and just keep the game simple like the original. And there's nothing wrong with that because that formula is really good. Uh, Bubble Bobble uh, has always been a fun series for me. I actually prefer uh, Rainbow Islands, but uh, that's just me. I do like the new upbeat music for the, the new game, though. It's not that it's going to make you want to get out and dance, but it's, it's, it's pretty catchy. So what I wanted to say about the original game on this, on this, on the original game on here, 
Uh, I think it's based off the arcade version because I don't really remember the game showing you what how many rounds the the, the game has. Uh, but anyways, it's just it's bubble bobble. Nothing really much to say about it that hasn't already been said uh, millions of times over the years. Uh, definitely a, a cool game to have in the collection. I did a review about Gunstar Superheroes a few months ago, and it still seems to this day that nobody really knows about this game. There was a sequel to the original Gunstar Heroes on the Genesis, and I honestly think this game is better than that one. The only downfall I would say about this game is that it does not have a two-player mode. But honestly, this is one of the games I would, would accept that doesn't have a two-player mode. I really enjoyed this game. It's probably one of the best run-and-gun shooters I ever played, and what even makes it better is that it's on the Game Boy Advance of all systems. The Game Boy Advance is a 32-bit system. A lot of people don't realize that. And this game really shows off what the system can do. So this game is like a weird type of sequel. It, it, it is a sequel to the original game, but it doesn't give you a timeline of which things happen. If it does, I didn't notice it. You get to play as Red or Blue. Uh, both are gun stars. In this game, they're both going against the uh, Empire. Now, I, I don't want to kind of tell the story of the game because it's actually very detailed for this game you know the first game story uh, was pretty much simplistic but this one actually goes deep into the characters from what i've seen uh, depending on what difficulty you play on easy mode will give you a different ending for each character uh, normal mode will give you a different ending and then a hard mode will give you the best ending or I, what i would think is a true ending uh in the game so um i would say practice the game first play on normal and then possibly go to uh, normal or hard if you feel like it but the endings are different so between the characters there are six different endings that the game has to offer this game is definitely a must-have if you have the game boy advance uh i recommend it to everybody i mean it's a lot of fun uh and it doesn't really go for that much well i shouldn't say that now because after this video who knows what people are trying to charge for this game but as of right now I looked for the game and it's actually around 10 to 15 dollars for the cart only hopefully some of you guys will pick this game up because i am tired of being the guy that talks about gunstar heroes and nobody knows about the sequel when i bring up the sequel they say hey what are you talking about dude but hopefully after this video no more alien hominid this game was more of, um i remember back in the day i, I believe it was like early well, it may have been 2004, 2005, 2006 even. I don't remember. But this game was a Flash game by Newgrounds. And I remember it was really popular. And I, re I enjoyed it. Then I found out that it had it was ported to the PS2, GameCube, and Xbox. But maybe about around five years ago, I found out that they had a Game Boy Advance port, which I was pretty amazed about. Now, as you can see from the footage, this is a running gun shooter. Uh, it's about an alien who gets stranded on uh, Earth and... Uh, I would say the G-Men are men in black are after him trying to take him out, so he's trying to survive. This is a running gun shooter. Uh, the original versions on the uh, on the consoles are two players. This version seems to be lacking that. I mean, I, I didn't see in the options where there's a two player mode, but that's all right. Like I said, a lot of these uh, games like this for the Game Boy Advance aren't two players for maybe a reason because of slowdown, but that doesn't stop the game from being fun. Now, I want you guys to know that this game is tough. You know, you have to be ready when you play this game because we're talking about the later Contra games kind of hard. Well, maybe in between, I'm not really sure. It's really up for you to judge. The game also mixes it up, you know, it changes the gameplay. It's not all just run and gun. There's spaceship levels that are a lot of fun because they kind of break, take a little break from the action, you know, the run and gun action because uh, it can get, you know, a little monotonous, but you know, it's. I think it's always good for games to change it up a little bit, you know, so you just won't get tired of the same gameplay going on. I also probably should have mentioned this in the beginning. Uh, this is not a, an American release title. This was only released in PAL territory, so uh, you might want to check your eBay PAL territory if you want to pick this game up. Uh, I didn't look at the price for it. Uh, I remember it was very cheap when I bought it, but like I said, prices are just crazy nowadays, so I have no idea what's going on. But uh, whatever price it is, I do think it's worth it, and it's up to you if you want to pick this up, but I think it's worth having in your collection. Konami's Crazy Racers, man, seriously, uh, <laughs> this game, is. if you like uh, Mario Kart, uh, you'll definitely like this game. Um, this I actually found out about this game pretty late, even though it, was, it came out early during the uh, Game Boy Advance's life cycle, for what, I'm, what I gathered. Over the years, I've become more familiar with a lot of Konami's niche characters that are probably like, like maybe like are not well known, like Gomamon, uh, the kids from uh, Poppin' Twin B and other characters, uh, they are all in this game. And a lot of, from, the, from their own games, a lot of the tunes and music are used in this game, like remixes. So that's kind of, pre that's pretty cool to me, you know, uh, 
Poppin' Twin B is one of my favorite shooters of all time. And they added the, the mix of the first level into this game, which I thought was just fantastic. It was, it was a great throwback for me. So like I said before, if you like Mario Kart, you'll, you should definitely like this game. Uh, it plays pretty much the same. Uh, the the power-ups are going away of you collecting uh, the bells and whistles, uh, like type items from uh, the Poppin' Twin Peak games, which is cool. Um, you could do all kind of moves from electrocuting your enemy, turn them into a small pig, all kind of weird things. But the game is a lot of fun, and it shows how powerful the Game Boy Advance really is. So if you don't own Crazy Racers, uh, stop what you're doing, go pick this game up. I don't think it's really expensive or anything like that. It shouldn't be. Well, you know, I probably should stop mentioning prices on here because people go crazy when prices are mentioned. But either way, I still think this game is cheap enough to go pick up. Uh, definitely a game you want to have in your collection. You know what? Go pick up this game right now. It's a game that everyone better have in their collection. I had to show that crazy intro because you would never know this is a shoot 'em up game by looking at the intro until the plane comes in. I thought that was hilarious. If you don't know about the Iridian games, uh, the first one I believe was an early launch title for the uh, uh, Game Boy Advance. Uh, was 3D graphics and they were kind of like, uh, uh, you know, it was okay. But uh, the game, which is the, the sequel, was actually put in 2D, which is a lot better. Now, one thing that stood out to me in this game is the soundtrack. The soundtrack is really nice. I mean, it's very compelling to listen to. I mean, these guys, you can tell they jammed out on it. Um, great soundtrack makes for a great shooting game. Uh, well, at least it'll help a shooting game, even if it's mediocre, uh, be good. But this one is not a mediocre game. It's a great game. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing this game. Uh, the game also um, has a password system. So uh, if you don't want to play through the story mode, you can just use the password and unlock certain stuff. I think that's cool. Because uh, I, I, I've had trouble with games, uh, the batteries dying out over the years, and that can be annoying when you unlock everything. So it's good to at least have a password system or maybe even a safe system, both. But the game has a lot of cool boss battles. Uh, just a very well done shoot 'em up game on the Game Boy Advance. Uh, definitely something, if you're a shoot 'em up guy, you'll want to have in the collection. I mean, the game is fantastic. Boss battles are clever, and it just, man, I just, I can't say enough about this game. Maybe I'll do a review on it someday. But uh, definitely one of the games you want to add to your collection. Uh, Wade Hickson's Counterpunch. I remember when I first met Jason, this is one of the games I told him to pick up. Uh, he picked it up. He enjoys the game a lot. Uh, most of the Metal Jesus crew has this game, from what I know. Um, you, this game is definitely the spiritual successor to the Punch-Out series, in my opinion. I mean, you fight all kind of quirky enemies, from uh, freaking a nightclub owner pimp to some red devil cooking hot dogs. And hell, there's even a freaking uh, safari jungle guy, which is hilarious. He has a voodoo doll that he uses to, as a special move to, to beat you up. So... Although these are a lot of the, the people in this game that kind of make this game special. It's hilarious. It's fun. If you definitely play the, the Punch-Out games, you'll definitely find joy in this. All the people you fight in this game have some kind of special move. So um, for the people who might have played this game, they might not know this, and, and it's a shocking knowing this, that you're, you're, they don't know that you're able to buy special moves in this game. So you're able to do a lot of crazy-looking moves uh, where it comes to a, like a super uppercut and a drop punch or paying the referee to count slow or count faster when you beat an enemy. There's all kind of gimmicks you can use in this game. Um, but you, that's, that's what you earn money for in the game to kind of get, earn those moves. And when you get them, you're pretty unstoppable, seriously. Here's my favorite special move in the game by Mimi Lee. She's a rave girl, and when she, when she gets her power bar up, she pretty much turns the lights off, and all you can see is her her, her gloves, her glow sticks coming at you. So I thought that was pretty a pretty cool move. Uh, and to let you guys know about her, she when you get to her, this is where the game actually gets tough. She's very fast, and I was having trouble play, like beating her again. You can see I was getting knocked out at first, but I came back and got her. I could actually go on talking about Wade Hickson forever, but uh, definitely a game I think uh, that people would want to have in their collection. The game came out late in the Game Boy Advance's life cycle, and I remember I was surprised about seeing it. Uh, but when I picked it up, man, everybody who saw me playing it said, Hey, Reggie, where'd you get that game from? So, uh, uh, like I said, you definitely want to pick this game up, especially if you're a Punch Out fan. Uh, very compelling game, very fun. Just takes a little bit to get used to, but aren't all Punch Out games like that? 
Lady Sia is an action platform game. Uh, hell, maybe even slash beat 'em up. Uh, it was published by TDK. <laughs> if you guys don't remember who TDK is, and I, and I don't expect a lot of you to know them, they were a company who made cassette tapes, from what I remember back in the day. They probably even made a VHS tapes, if I remember correctly too. But anyways, um, they did a couple of games uh, on the on. They did a couple of video games actually, and uh, I'm gonna go over the other ones. But this one is probably the best one they did. So a little bit about the story with the game. Lady Sia is actually a princess, and she's actually uh, uh, she she's warned her kingdom of some kind of threat that's happening. But uh, I don't remember all the details, but because I kind of skipped through some of the dialogue. But uh, basically, she's just trying to do everybody's work for him. So uh, she goes out on her own own adventure uh, and taking care of the business. And it's good that she's doing that because this game is a lot of fun. You know, a game is fun when you you only plan on playing it for like a good ten minutes, and then next thing you know, you're playing it for like two hours. You know, and that's that's how Lady Sia is. You know, the game will just pull you in. A lot of fun. I don't know what the game's going for nowadays, but I, when it, when I remember I picked it up, it was like almost five bucks complete. Uh, definitely a game you want to have in your collection. Uh, a blast to play. And really overall hidden in my opinion. I never heard anybody else talk about this game besides close friends. Uh, some of you guys will probably know about this game, hopefully. Um, it's just a, a, a good game and a lot of fun. I actually want to go play it right now, but I got to finish up this video. But for those of you who are thinking about picking the game up, uh, you know, it, I think the game is worth it. Seriously, I had a blast playing it. I think you will too. Um, definitely one of the games I don't hear people talking about. The beautiful Lady Sia. You'll only find her on the Game Boy Advance system because uh, I don't think this game had a sequel or any other port to another system. So this is a Game Boy Advance exclusive that you only find on this system. So that's kind of cool in a way. But uh, all right, guys, I'm letting you off the hook. Scourge the Hive. Um, if you like uh, games like Metroid or even Castlevania, you'll definitely like the Scourge. Uh, basically, the Scourge is about a virus you're trying to contain on a, at a facility. Uh, pretty crazy game. Now, the game plays in an isometric view, so if you don't, don't like isometric type games, uh, it might not be the game for you. Uh, I'm not really a fan of isometric type games, but I really like this game because it, it has an eeriness to it that the Metroid games have. And it just the, the just the mystery of the game and trying to contain the virus and going around trying to fix everything. It's just it's just a really cool game. So Scourge actually came out on the DS as well. Uh, both games are the same, uh, but I would tell people to get the Game Boy Advance version. The reason being is because of course you could play it portable, and you could play it on a, on your Game Boy Player, so you could play it on your television. And uh, having a game having that's one thing that's great about the Game Boy Advance player. I mean, playing games on a television, it's just man, I just I love being able to have that option. So to go in a little gameplay, this is the type of game where you have to go to certain areas, you know, access keys or find certain items to move on. And at the same time, your infection rating in the middle of the screen is uh, you want you don't want that to get to 100 percent because it means you have to get pretty much vaccinated or cured. Um, you get to that point, uh, you, it starts draining your health. But just make sure you watch it. You know, like I said, you know, it's part of the excitement of the game of sometimes forgetting it or, you know, keeping your eye on it, making sure you're watching it. Makes it more exciting. Um, I like that the developers took a risk with this game. Uh, I don't. I don't know if it really paid off because, like I said, I, I don't hear anybody ever talking about this game. It's, it's pretty much unknown, and that's you know, pretty sad. You know, like you know, I think this game is one of the ones that are out there. That's like this is the type of Game Boy Advance game where you you play at night or you, you put your headphones in and you just get lost in the world of trying to, you know, fix everything. It's just, it's a great game. But anyways, hopefully you guys will give this game a chance. Scourge the Hive. You can pick it up on the Game Boy Advance or RDS system. But I prefer you guys get it on the Game Boy Advance. Blender Bros, a game I've always wanted to talk about. I talked about it on Jason's channel years ago. Uh, fantastic game that I, I know people don't even know about this game. It's pretty sad. So basically, uh, you're the Blender Bros, and you're going into the future to fix things. Uh, you're going against uh, these bad guys called the Zooligans, which is a hilarious name, Zooligans. Wow. But the game consists, you know, you have boss battles, level select, all kind of cool stuff. There's dialogue, story mode. It has really good music, too, like some catchy tunes. 
I'm personally still in the middle of playing it. You know, I put it down years ago and I picked it back up and I just got back into it. I got to be careful because I got to start beating games that I play because, you know, you start to forget about them and I hate doing that. But uh, for most of you guys, I don't think Blender Bros is a game you'll forget about. Definitely a game you'll pick up and play all, probably all the way to the end. Very well done, unknown. Uh, I never heard anybody talk about this game. It's just a lot of fantastic stuff about this game that I think a lot of people will enjoy. But Blender Bros is definitely a game that you'll say when you play, you say, wow, I can't believe I didn't know this game existed. This game is amazing. And developers did a great job on it. It's a shame that it's not well known. But hey, I'm trying to get the word out. So go out there, pick up a copy of Blender Bros. And last but not least, you guys knew I had to talk about Drill Dozer. Um, this game was made by the people who brought you the Pokemon series. I guess Nintendo decided to branch out and let them do another game. And this, this is what they came out with. And man, what a fantastic game it is. This game is just definitely one of my top platform games of all time. Seriously, they did a good job on this game. Uh, the music is compelling, especially when you get that third gear. I mean, this game just takes off. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's seriously a great time. If you guys want to know more about the game, I actually did a review on this, uh, and I'll leave it in the description. Uh, I go into more detail about it there and go through some of the gimmicks that it has. Uh, like I said, guys, it's def it's just such a well done game. I mean, seriously, this have to, this had to be on the list. This is a total hidden gem because nobody nobody ever talks about Drill Dozer, and this is a great game. This is one of the games that should be this should go in the history books. I mean, seriously, I mean, I mean, I may be talking crazy, but you know, seriously, man, it, I, I like games like this, and this game really needs to be remembered by folks. I, of course, I don't want it to be a hidden gem. I, I wish it was more well known because we possibly could have got a sequel for it. As, I, as far as I know, there's no sequel for this game and definitely no plans for a sequel that I know of, but maybe that'll change someday. Who knows? I doubt it as long as everybody's obsessed with Pokemon. But still, at least we got this one game. Uh, I really enjoy it. And I think most of you guys will too. You know, uh, I'm very appreciative of this game. Uh, I, I really don't know what else to say about it. Like I said, if you guys want more details about it, I have a review uh, that's up uh, loaded on my channel. Check that out. Uh, but I, I'll tell you one thing that really compels me about Drill Dozer. I love the Third Gear theme song. If you if you guys like that song, man, you guys know what I'm talking about. Who knows? Maybe if they actually remake this game, they'll make a they'll make a console version. That'd be nice. But even if that did happen, they would remake it to the way it probably wouldn't have even have sprites anymore. Tank Tank was originally an arcade game. Um, the the home well the Game Boy Advance port of it uh, really reminds me of this game I had when I was a kid called Solomon's Key. Basically, uh, you try to collect uh, these these coins, and once you collect all the coins, a door opens. So you have to go through a lot of obstacles just to get to them, uh, trying to dodge enemies, and you can attack back and everything. But you just have to be very careful because uh, you only have a, a limited a number of lives before you get to the boss and. Uh, Every time you lose all your lives, you have to start to level over again, which can be annoying sometimes. For the most part, I really enjoyed this game. It's a lot of fun. Um, I just wish that it had some of the music that the arcade version has. Uh, the arcade version really has a catchy soundtrack. But as you progress through this game, you'll go to different planets. And uh, after doing 10 levels, on the 10th level of each planet, you'll fight a boss. Uh, the bosses uh, range from different kind of monsters, um, depending on the planet you go to. Since we're seeing the ice planet right now, you'll see a snowman as the boss, which is, he's kind of annoying, but he's still pretty easy to beat. Yeah, this is what I recommend when you still first start this game, to do the ice planet first. So if you're a fan of these type of puzzle adventure games, uh, try it out. Tang Tang's a cool option. CT Special Forces is a total hidden gem. Now, I'm adding both games in here, but what we're going to look at is the first game. Uh, this game pretty much plays like a Metal Slug game. If you're a fan of the Metal Slug games, this is definitely right up your alley. This game was totally hidden to me. I found out about it two years ago and I forgot the name of it, so it was weird trying to find it again, but I found it, and now that I found out that two games came out to America on the Game Boy Advance, and uh, they are really cool. I'm surprised with as good as this game looked, it, it didn't get that much recognition. It really looks like the Metal Slug game, so that's what really drew my attention. Uh, you can actually, uh, enemies in this game, you can actually capture some, and you get more points for doing that. You can also shoot them too, but you get less for that. Uh, but like I said, it's a really cool game, lots of fun. Uh, now here we're looking at the second game. The second game has different elements to it. You know, there's a shooter part, which you're seeing right now, which is fun. And then later on, you play the running gun part again, and it really changes things up in the second one. That's, I like that kind of stuff. The second game is more the same, which is a good thing. 
uh, you pretty much go against terrorists, you know, you're shooting them, you know, finding out intel, things like that. The game has is really heavy on story in a way, like, you know, it has a lot of text, which I'm not showing right now, but you can actually skip past the text, like, unlike games like Mega Man X5, if you guys remember that. But anyways, uh, it's just a really fun game, and also, there's a little secret, this actually came out on the PlayStation in PAL territories, uh, so... Just in case anybody wants to like move up to that version, you know, it's pretty much the same, but it's just a better, I would say it's just a more graphical, better graphical looking version of the game. A lot of people don't know that Super Ghouls and Ghosts was released for the Game Boy Advance as well. This version is actually updated in graphics. Everything looks a lot better. Uh, you'll notice that from the beginning, a lot, everything's a lot brighter, just very, just, just very blown up at you. This was probably one of the first uh, console games that scared the crap out of me. I remember playing Super, the original Super Goals and Ghosts on the Super Nintendo at home by myself, and it just scared the crap out of me. The intro scene in the beginning uh, where the, the, the princess is kidnapped is just insane. It looks better on this version, but it, it still doesn't capture the essence of the Super Nintendo version for some reason. It seems like something's off. But even so... It's still well done, as you can see right here. It just it, it's it's good looking, but it's just not as scary as the other one for me. I mean, the other one was just darker, the dark window. I don't know what it is. It's just I just felt that one's better. But enough about that. <laughs> Let's get into this game. So what's really cool about this game is that it has an arranged mode. Now I, I, I would tell people to play the arranged mode because you can select what levels you go to as you progress through the story. This game has exclusive new levels. Levels, excuse me, my mic cut out on me. <laughs> but anyways, you start from the original first level, then you can choose whatever level you want to go to. Uh, the arrange mode also, you only have to beat the game once, unlike the original version where you have to beat the game twice uh, in a row to get the real ending. You can play it all in this, you can play the whole game in this one setting. All you need to do is just get the um, the right weapon to defeat the boss, and which, which becomes available randomly. And you can use that to go ahead and fight the final boss. Uh, this game also has, I believe, two of the Genesis versions uh, levels, uh, the the windmill level, and I, I believe there's one other level I can't remember that that's uh, on this version from the Genesis version. That's also nice. I believe it also has uh, one of the the original Ghost and Goblins, one of its levels upgraded on this game as well. The newer levels that you'll see, I believe there's like four to five of them, are actually really unique, but they are tough, so you have to bring your skills with you because this game is no joke, as you guys know. I mean, the Ghouls and Ghosts games are pretty brutal, but if you're an expert like myself, you'll get through them in no time. Uh, this game does suffer from some slowdown, uh, depending on which level you're on. Um, you want to get enemies off the screen as soon as possible because you don't want the game to start slowing down or anything like that, but usually that's pretty easy to do. So the new levels come new bosses. These guys really feel like they are a part of the game. They really feel unique. I was actually thinking that they might have been like uh, like ideas from the, the original game that just didn't make it to the final cut. I had a really good time figuring these guys out and their new tactics. Uh, they really feel a part of the game. Not only a part of the game, but not they don't feel like an afterthought. They really feel like flushed out. They, these really feel like these demonic enemies are part of the series and they're very rememberable. If you're a fan of adventure platformers, you'll definitely like Super Ghouls and Ghosts for the Game Boy Advance. I actually choose this version over the Super Nintendo version just because of the way you can choose your levels and you only have to play through the game once if you play the arranged mode. You know, that's also a nice touch. So, hope you guys check this one out. Advanced Guardian Heroes for the Game Boy Advance. This is a sequel or semi-sequel to Guardian Heroes for the Sega Saturn and the Xbox 360 Live. This is a beat em up with RPG elements. Uh, you can level your characters up. You can choose between a lot of characters in the beginning, but you unlock them more after you beat the game. This game is pretty action packed. Uh, probably one of my favorite beat em ups on the Game Boy Advance. The only problem with this game is that a lot of people know this too is that it has immense slowdown when a lot of things are going on in the screen. So I would suggest if you pick a character in this game, pick somebody with more beat em up elements because if you pick a magic user it's going to cause the game to slow down a bit. Now, the game actually has a deep story but it's actually kind of hard to follow because they actually translated the the uh, the Japanese script uh, like literally like you know they didn't try to make any sense of it really so the, the English is really kind of broken. I understand the story somewhat 
uh, but it's just kind of weird that they didn't translate it properly. But um, it doesn't hurt the game at all. It's still a lot of fun, uh, very deep, involving uh, battle system. You can level up, which is nice. Uh, you can get really powerful if you do things right. And after you beat the game, you actually get to uh, unlock the original heroes from the first game, which I've already done. You can probably see them here as I'm using them in the battlefield right now. The game is two-player co-op, which I've only seen um, once, as I played it once back in the day. Uh, I don't have a second copy, but I should get one because it's nice to see these type of games able to have co-op, you know, so a second uh, cartridge wouldn't be a bad idea for this game. Also, one thing you need to remember about this game, it can be extremely easy or extremely hard depending on uh, well, how you play it and the difficulties you set. You know, I would set it right in the middle, like the medium, but you know, that could be too hard for some people because the game starts out pretty rough. So um, you have to level up pretty fast and level up the right uh, uh, elements. All in all, I really enjoyed this game. I like it a lot. It might not be for everybody, but it's definitely what I would consider a hidden gem if you could look past its flaws, the slowdown, and things like that. You know, uh, I was just happy to actually get a sequel to the original game because the original game was like, it's just a cult classic of a lot of fun, awesome game. And it's kind of sad that we haven't seen any more games like this. You know, I mean, I mean, this took beat em ups to another level, in my opinion. You know, to add an intriguing story, things like that, it just made it really cool. But check it out if you have a chance. Seema the Enemy, also known as Frontier Stories, is a tactical action RPG from what <laughs> I've played so far. That's the best way to describe this game. So there's the human race and the Seema race. The Seema race are pretty much the monsters you fight throughout the game. Now at the beginning, you're on your way to a destination, but somehow you hit some kind of like a dimension portal. And when you hit this portal, you're transferred to, I would say this, uh, kind of like an area in between station and your your train that you're on is pretty much i don't want to say it's cut in half but let's just well yeah that's just the best way to put it it's kind of cut in half and you and the remaining um uh passengers are like stuck together and you have to find a way to work together to survive so far at least this is what i played so far i'm still somewhat in the beginning stages of the game i'm in the middle yeah i'm in the beginning right now so I'm trying to complete it, but this is what for, so far what I could tell. So the game pretty much plays out where you're all together at the same time, but you just kind of like work together and you try to protect each other from being attacked. You could you could command everybody to move around to certain areas so they won't be attacked. Uh, that really helps out. And you just kind of move everybody around and you kind of protect each other. And you, you all level up while doing this. Anyways, guys, check out Seema the Enemy. I think it's a total hidden gem. Rescue Heroes, Billy Blazes. Uh, <laughs> this is a Way Forward title. You guys know I love Way Forward. They put out some solid games, and this game is no exception. I just recently found out about this title. Well, actually, I knew about it for a couple of years, but I just totally forgot about it, and I recently picked it up finally. Um, very happy I did because this game was one of those games that really it would have been forgotten because especially because of the way the cover looks you know the cover looks kind of silly <laughs> uh, you if by looking at the cover you you might not take it seriously I mean it looks like a kids game which it is a kids game but that's still you know it's still a, a fun game actually you know very simple title um, bare bones I would say where when it comes to just what you have to do in the game you put out fires and you rescue civilians and also the game changes it up where it kind of it turns into like a shoot 'em up bonus level after each uh, of the levels from what I've seen. But I, I like the music and I like the way the game controls. You know, it's very simple. You get different uh, accessories too to help you during your quest. You get your, your hose, of course. You get an axe to break boxes with. You just pretty much going around rescuing people and that's, that's the all right thing. You know, even though this game it, it has a physical release, I feel like it still would be lost in time because it's just a total game that like people will forget about you know and it's, it's totally that shouldn't be the case there's something that's always intrigued me about firemen you know anybody who could put on that gear and run into a fire i mean seriously man because if you haven't been around a fire you you guys know that that heat is intense you know it's, it's serious business man anybody who could do something like that man is a true hero 
Anyways, guys, go pick up a, a copy of Real Heroes, Billy Blazes. You won't regret it. Gundam fight. Ready, go. Mobile suit, Gundam Seed, Battle Assault. It's a 2D fighting game for the Game Boy Advance. I'm a big fan of the G Gundam fighting series uh, anime on TV. Uh, that was the one with Master Asia, one of my favorite villains uh, and protagonists. If you, it depends on the way you look at them. But anyways, this is a solid fighting game for the Game Boy Advance system. A lot of fun. Totally went under my radar over the years. I found out about it actually two years ago and I picked it up. It really feels solid, to be honest. You know, the moves are easy to pull off. It's actually compelling. Uh, you actually have two health bars. You first your you have your green bar, then after the green bar depletes, then there's your red health, so that shows you where you get finished off and everything. You can do super moves, regular moves, uh, it's just all about, it's just really good. Now even though I said you don't have to be a fan of the Gundam series to enjoy this game, it will make it a lot more enjoyable if you are a fan of that series, because man, seriously, these type of games, I, I, you don't really see them being made this way anymore. You know, everybody's went gone the 3D route, and it's just like... Man, I just love a good one-on-one -on -one battle here and there, you know. Now, I'm not on the competition level, but, you know, you know, basic skills, casually, it's a lot of fun. So, if you guys see this game, check it out. So, Boulder Dash EX uh, uh, is a sequel to our remake of the regular Boulder Dash. Now, the classic game is on here, but I don't recommend anybody playing it. I'm not going to show any footage on here because it'll hurt your eyes. But this game adds a story mode about a rabbit named Alex. I think he's either a rabbit or a cat. I don't know what he is. But him and his friend Sonia are running out to play at the lake. And they, they end up sitting down and relaxing. And Alex actually gives Sandra a gift, you know, and she goes ecstatic for it. But, you know, when games start out this way, you know they can't last all happily forever. So as soon as this happens, you know, something bad happens. And, of course, you have to go on the rescue. Now, Boulder Dash pretty much plays like where you collect jewels and you have to try to collect them without getting crushed by boulders pretty much. So it kind of plays like uh, something like maybe on a cross between Mr. Driller or maybe even Dig Dug in a way. Very simple game, a lot of fun actually. I think the story mode actually adds a lot to the game. You know, it makes it really cool. The game has some catchy tunes as well, so the music doesn't hurt the ears as well. But one thing I want to tell you guys about is the multiplayer mode, which is a lot of fun. Now, so when you play multiplayer mode, you can play up to four people. And you can also play four people uh, co-op as well if you have, I think if you have four of the game as well. But this game, you might not need four. I'm not really sure. I have to look that up, actually. Anyway, you try to collect the most jewels before everybody else, before the time runs out. And, uh, of course, you, the other opponents are trying to stop you. But what's really cool, you can actually rotate the screen. And actually certain boulders can fall on other characters to stop them from getting jewels. So it makes it real competitive. It actually reminds me of a lot of Bomberman. So you see Boulder Dash EX out there, pick it up, man. This game is a lot of fun, a total hit and gem. I think everybody will enjoy. Survival horror on the Game Boy Advance? Hell yeah, sign me up. So A Sound of Thunder is actually based off a book that's based off a movie or the other way around. I can't really remember. <laughs> but anyways, uh, this is a survival horror game for the Game Boy Advance and, and pretty much it's very, it has a very like, uh, I don't know how to say it, but it, it's very, like, the game really goes off the sound effects to kind of, like, really trip you out. It doesn't really have any music during gameplay. So, basically, you're depending on, hearing like, what you hear is what's out there. And uh, if you hear a sound of thunder, then get ready because something is coming after you. So, uh, pretty much, the, 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 the game is based off the movie, and I'll just tell you what happens. So, they go back in time, and they do something that kind of affects the uh, flow of time. So, you know, you step on a butterfly or you do something different. It just has like all these crazy effects in the future. But this has to be one of the worst because uh, something that has to do with dinosaurs coming to modern time is pretty horrible. You know, um, think about think about this game kind of like a Jurassic Park in the, in the main in the main world. Like if there was no zoo to hold them or island to like, keep them in check, they were just all over the place. That's pretty much what this game is. And these dinosaurs and lizards and all kind of things just appear everywhere. And you have to like kind of depend on what you hear to know what you're up against. So as you can see, the game is played at an isometric view, and it actually works for this game. You know, there's there, these actually dinosaurs are actually pretty smart. They actually will hide around corners that you can't see, so to be very careful. And that You know, knowing that in this game made me really excited because that's true survival horror when you don't know what's behind a, a counter or, or a shelf or whatever. 
Also, this game has some kind of link play. I mean, I don't know if it's co-op or anything like that, but, you know, I have to get another cart to see how it plays, but uh, I actually wonder how it is. I mean, could you imagine this was two-player? This would be awesome. I mean, now I'm talking about two-player at the same time, not that take turn crap. You know, you can do that with one controller. But anyways, game is very fun so far. You know, honestly, you know, you don't get too many survival horror types uh, on the Game Boy Advance, you know. And I'm talking about the old school survival horror types where you have to use passwords, open doors, you know. You'll get locked in a room with a bunch of dinosaurs and you can't leave until you kill them. That kind of weird stuff. But anyways, guys, if you see Sound of Thunder, uh, pick it up. Uh, you won't regret it, at least in my opinion. All right, so the first game we have is Project S11. This game is a shoot 'em up, and it's a story-based shoot 'em up, which is really nice. You know, you know, on the Game Boy Color of all systems, uh, I didn't, I skipped through the story. I just wanted to play the game at the time. Uh, but first thing you want to do, of course, like in any shoot 'em up game, is get your upgrades as soon as possible. Shooting one laser is pretty horrible. So your second upgrade will be two double laser, and then after that, you get a, you get a choice of different weapons like a spread shot. Uh, scattered missiles, a flamethrower. I mean, they, they're all pretty good, actually. The flamethrower is actually one of my favorites, as you'll see in a second here. The missiles are okay, but they just, I don't know, they just leave an open area for me, so I didn't really like them too much. The game scrolls at a steady pace, and there's no, like, flickering going on. You know, it just seems everything, you can see everything on screen, and it's not, you don't feel too rushed. Another thing I like about this game is that it's not one of those shoot 'em up games that, like, you get hit once and you die at the start of that checkpoint. No, you have a life bar, and then when that life bar runs out, I believe you could continue at the same spot. I totally forgot right now, but either way, this is a steady pace shoot 'em up game that I think a lot of people will be able to enjoy. Next up, we have Azure Dreams. Um, nobody knew that there was a Game Boy Color version of the game. I actually have the PlayStation copy, and um, when I found out the Game Boy Color had a copy, I was just I was just shocked. So I'm actually actually playing this on my Retron Five. And for some reason, it's acting like it's planted on a, a Super Game Boy, so that's why the screen is it like a screen and screen. But uh, if you want to know about this game, it plays like a Pokemon type game. You know, you have uh, these battles, you capture monsters. From what I remember, I can't remember everything, but it has a decent story. Um, it, it's like a what you would call maybe like a, another type Pokemon type game if you like that type of stuff. Uh, <laughs> Most of you guys know I probably don't really care about it, but uh, I decided to give the game a try because I thought that this would be a, a hidden gem for you guys, uh, something interesting, something different. You know, maybe one day I will play all the way through both versions, um, but from what I played of this one, I actually liked it and I thought it was kind of cool. It is very uh, story-based, so, um, you know, you talk to characters and you exchange items, all kind of different stuff. The battle system, as you can see right here, looks almost <laughs> like exactly like Pokemon. But uh, a solid game nonetheless. Uh, like I said, if you have a choice between the versions of, that you can find in the game, of this game, of course you're going to get the PlayStation version. But if the if you see the Game Boy Color version out there, pick it up and try it. You know, it looks like a solid game. Um, I really like the Game Boy Color system. I really feel that a lot of games on this system really kind of pushed it to its limits. And I'll go on a little bit about that later in the video. But also, guys, uh, let me know what you think about this game in the comments, if you knew about this game or if you played it before and how you compare it to the PlayStation version. <laughs> I know that's a funny thing to ask, but, you know, heck, some people might think this version is better, you know. Um, you guys already know what I'm going to say. I think the PlayStation version is better. But this one holds its own, too, I think, you know. I think, also, I would definitely get into this type of game, well, this version of the, of the Pokemon-type games than the regular Pokemon games, just because everybody's already on that hype train. But anyways, guys, check out Azure Dreams. You might like it. Mr. Driller for the Game Boy Color. Um, you guys have probably heard me talk about the, uh, the Mr. Driller series in other videos. Uh, I'm a big fan of Mr. Driller Part 2 for the Game Boy Advance. So I went ahead and uh, bought this game just because I wanted to see how it started off. And uh, this is a solid game, you know. It has a story mode just like the other games. Uh, basically, uh, it's just a basic story mode. But uh, I won't go into any details because nobody really cares about that. But uh, how you play the game is that you keep digging and you keep digging until you get the bottom. But you have to make sure that you don't get squashed and also you have to watch your air supply. If you run out of air, you know, you're, that's it for you. You know, you have to get the little air capsules to keep yourself going. 
And you also want to uh, try to avoid the uh, the Xbox because well the X boxes because uh, if you drill through those, it takes your air supply. So uh, you drill too many of those, you're out of there too. So just be careful of that. And also, you know, I like the game has a high score system, so you always put your name in there and save it. Uh, if you see Mr. Driller out there, check it out. It's a solid game, um, a solid series. Uh, kind of, I would say it's a spinoff of the Dig Dug games, but uh, not really too sure about that. But anyways, guys, uh, check it out. So, funny story. Uh, Alone in the Dark was one of the first survival horror games I played when I moved to Korea back in 2001. Um, <laughs> I played the PlayStation version, loved it, awesome game. Years later, I'm playing the uh, Game Boy Color version, and to be honest with you guys, this game is one of those games that pushes the Game Boy Color to its limits. They did a great job on this game. This is survival horror on the Game Boy Color, uh, This is, and it's solid. And it kind of it plays things differently from the original game, so the uh, the original game of Alone in the Dark, uh, New Nightmare, you're on a, you take a plane ride to find out a mystery of what happened to one of your friends that was killed. And the plane gets into an accident and crashes. In this version, the plane actually lands safely. So <laughs> that was already a shocker for me. But the way the game plays, it plays like survival horror. And then um, when you run into enemies, it goes into a battle mode. So it, it actually changes things up. And uh, it, it, you'll, you'll know because your character will he'll start talking. And you know you have to get ready for battle. You can switch between different weapons during battle. Uh, heal yourself. All kind of cool stuff. And then it, it's not too hard, actually. You know, like most survival horror games, you know, a lot of people think they're hard, but no, this is this is not hard. This is easy to pick up and play. It's actually pretty scary because the sound effects are trippy. Like you hear screams and all kind of weird things. So you can see people like walking past windows and it goes into details of all that stuff. So um, I'm very impressed with this game. It also makes me think about how Resident Evil would have looked if it was 100% finished on the uh, Game Boy Color, even though we got the 99% build of it, I believe, or 90% version of it, um, I think it would have been a solid game just like this one. So guys, if you're a fan of the Alone in the Dark series and you kind of like saw this one and, and like laughed at it because you thought like, how is that going to play on the Game Boy Color? You know, give it a try. I mean, seriously, this is a solid game. Uh, <laughs> it's scary. Uh, play with headphones in and you'll see what I'm talking about. Windy every which way. <laughs> okay, so here's the funny thing. Now, as you can see in the beginning right there, this game is also compatible with the Game Boy Advance system. It actually gives you extra levels, which I couldn't access because I was actually playing this on a Retron 5. So at the time of this video, I haven't tried the, the levels out on the Game Boy Advance. If anybody else has played them, let me know how they compare. All right, so from what you could tell with the story, uh, Windy let some kind of ancient spirits loose or something, some kind of orbs loose. And it actually uh, makes a castle in the sky, loses essence, and it falls to the ground. So now she has to go in and rescue and, like, well, kind of fix everything. I don't think she has to rescue anybody. But the whole gimmick in this game is the gravity. You could change gravity uh, of, of, like, uh, of all the enemies on the screen. Now, when I first saw that, I thought that was a cool gimmick. I mean, seriously, just the way you platform around, you have to change gravity just to kind of, like, you know like do things and that's that's pretty unique in a game you know I, there's not many games i know that do things like that but the whole premise in this game is that you have to uh, get the orbits back and fix everything of course um the game has some excellent platforming uh lots of tricks and everything and also when you finish uh, sections of the level um usually the levels are uh, each section has three levels i believe i think it was three or four and after that uh when you go to another part of the castle you get on your boom and ride there like a shoot 'em up so that's how the game kind of switches things up when there's too much platforming you know it changes things up that's one thing i think i like about the way forward company they always have fresh ideas so if you definitely see this game out there you know pick it up especially if you like platform type games windy every which way is a solid game by our favorite people way forward you know and not a lot of people know about this game, which was unfortunate at the time. I mean, I guess nobody really cared about it. You know what I mean? Like platform games back, I would say in the early 2000s, weren't really that popular, at least in my opinion. Things also get tricky during the later levels too, so um, need to be careful. Of course, what they do is throw a bunch of spikes in at you, so it makes you really think about what you're gonna do next. You know, also you could change gravity in the mid air too, so you don't have to always like just do it from the, the bottom and to the ceiling. You can also do it midway just to protect yourself. Um, that's a good idea to, to kind of get used to it as well because you will be crashing into spikes if you're not careful. 
So if you see this game out in the wild, pick it up. You won't regret it. Buying up Commando Elite Forces. So um, this is kind of a, a throwback. I, I got this game recently at my local game store, Super Smash Games, and it reminded me of my ninth birthday. Uh, my mom got me buying a Commando for Nintendo, and I never heard of that game, and I was upset about it because the game was kind of weird to play. That ended up being one of the best Nintendo games I ever owned. Once you get that game down, it is freaking awesome. And I can say the same thing about this game as well. So, Bionic Commando Elite Forces is very story-driven. Uh, it, it pretty much goes off the premise of the, uh, the original game as well for Nintendo. You have the grappling hook, you have a gun. Uh, it plays pretty much the same. Uh, you try to, you, you try to find out information on, on what's going on in the level. But this game did something that I did not expect. And it actually, uh, I would say, it, it changed things up. Now, before I go into that, you can switch between two characters, which is a, a female commando and a, and a male commando. I just choose the female because I thought that was cool to have a main, like a main hero as a female. So I picked her. I don't think there's any difference between the two, but they do interact during the levels. But see, the, the thing about this one is, there is a there are sniper levels. Uh, there's sniper missions during the level, so all of a sudden you have to take out snipers uh, on on another tower, and it's it's freaking awesome the way it plays out, and it's kind of brutal too. I mean, when you shoot these guys, they you can see the blood splatter and everything. It's pretty like crazy, but uh, just a really solid game. And uh, man, I just don't know what else to say about it. I mean, I, I'm just in the beginning stages of playing it, but. I can just tell this is one of the ones out there that's like a must own for the system. What's this? Another way forward game, Extreme Sports. <laughs> so uh, I just found out about this game recently, and this game is a blast, seriously. So it has this little story mode about two kids who enter a contest. Well, they have to enter a tournament, pretty much. And it's, it's sponsored by some kind of soda called X-Cola, which even the kids in the game say is pretty gross. But nonetheless, they entered the tournament. Uh, basically, you could walk around and uh, apply to different events, and you sign up to the tournament. Um, from what I've played so far, there are five games you could play. There's a surfing level, which was a lot of fun. Um, thank God it wasn't like TNC Surf, because that, that surfing in that game was horrible. But uh, it's a lot of fun, and basically you're trying to beat times of uh, other previous champions in all the, the, the sports you try. This game right here, this part right here, I forgot what this level was called, but it's basically just, you're kind of like rolling down the street or just like, it's kind of weird. This level was weird, but you're kind of hopping over obstacles and that's how you gain points. The skating level was a lot of fun. You get to grind on the rails and you're trying to capture the flags as well without falling and trying to get your best score. But uh, this is the funny thing about this game. You're going to see why this game is called Extreme Sports, at least in my opinion. So uh, there's a skateboard level, which I'm, I'm not very good at. I was kind of sucking at it. I was trying to get the controls down, and I couldn't do it properly. So this one, this is one I still have to try to qualify for. But still, I think it's fun. It'll be fun once I, I get it down. But here's where extreme sports happens. This reminds me of the scene. If I think it was Triple X with Van Diesel. <laughs> and uh, maybe the game, no, the, what came out first? This game or the movie? I'm not really sure. Or maybe the movie got the idea from this game. Who knows? Either way. It's freaking cool, and uh, this is my favorite out of the, uh, the the sports events that are currently available available so far. I don't know if there are any more, but basically you have to try to do stunts and grind grind points before you hit the ground. And it's pretty easy. You just do it in a, in a couple of motions, and you let go of the B button. So you just you get the the signs, and you're able to to kind of like uh, do all the motions, and then you let go of the button, and then next thing you know, you're doing a stunt. You want to do as many as possible before you hit the ground so you can qualify. So that is Extreme Sports for you guys. Uh, a very solid game, a lot of fun. You could tell WayForward had a good time creating this game. If you see it out there, pick it up. So now we have Sabrina Spooked. Uh, I actually put both Sabrina games in here. And if you guys are laughing at me, don't laugh because these games are solid. I mean, seriously, these are WayForward titles, and they did an outstanding job on these. This is the reason I picked them up. When I found out Way Forward did these games, you know, it was almost like, you know what, dude, like, I gotta try it out, and I wasn't disappointed. Now, it is simplistic, you know, from what I played, you know, this seems very, very, very basic, but at the same time, it just some reason you keep wanting to play it, like you want to finish the level and see what happens next or something cool, and it's not bad on the eyes or anything. Uh, the first game that I'm showing you guys, Spooks, plays pretty simple. You collect the diamonds and the uh, in the stars and once you get an, an, enough uh diamonds you can leave the level 
and it's it's just pretty simple like that and also the cat will come and help you as well if you need to now Sabrina zapped which is the one i like more is that um you're in some kind of school and you're fighting against enemies so you have to kind of like hop on the enemies and while they're dizzy you kind of zap them and they turn back into the kids in the school so you're out pretty much rescuing the kids in the school that were changed into animals i guess or uh, pretty much what I know of it. I kind of actually like skipped some of the story. So, but you can also use the cat in this one to help you out. And he goes around and kind of unlocks stuff for you or just gets items for you that you might need. So if you see the Sabrina game, check it out. All right, so here we have Metal Gear Solid, also known as Metal Gear Solid Ghost Babble. Now, people might be asking, hey, Reggie, you know, like Metal Gear Solid is not a hidden gem. Well, the Game Boy Color version is because you never hear people talking about this game. This is probably one of the better Metal Gear Solid games out there. I mean, seriously, this game is on point. Story mode, uh, boss battles, it just they just really did this game a service. So basically, this game, if I remember correctly, it's a spinoff of the second or, well, it's a sequel to the first or second original Metal Gear games. I can't remember which one. But basically, this one replaces Metal Gear Solid that we know on the PlayStation. Like It's like an alternate like path or alternate reality, kind of. But nobody cares about that. This is an awesome game. So basically, you have to sneak around, do your thing. And, I mean, for a Game Boy Color game, I mean, they really did an outstanding job. I mean, they really captured the Metal Gear Solid feel. I mean, I know this game pretty much follows Metal Gear Solid 2. Well, Metal Gear 2, excuse me, on the uh, MX, whatever that system's called on Nintendo, the disc system. I can't remember. Sorry. But basically, you'll be sneaking around, trying to find out what's going on. Uh, you have Colonel Campbell back in your corner, and a couple of new people in there as well. I remember playing this game back in AIT training, back in the Army, and uh, it was just a lot of fun. A great experience playing this game. This is traditional Metal Gear, well, Metal Gear Solid game, how it's supposed to be. Now, you would think it'd be weird with two buttons to control, but they actually, the game controls well. I mean, they make everything work, and it works really well. So now we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics in the Metal Gear Solid game, and that is the bosses, Black Chamber. Uh, these guys are pretty badass. Um, they are a, a Delta Force, uh, like a defunct uh, Delta Force unit, and you're you're going to go out. These are the guys that are after you. Uh, first is Slasher Hawk, uh, Marionette Owl, which is one of my favorite ones. Uh, you'll go against Pyro Bison and Black Arts Viper, which is their leader. Boss battles are pretty clever in this game as well, so you have to use your thinking cap, you know, thermal goggles, uh, night vision on some bosses, really cool stuff, you know. Um, this Metal Gear game doesn't let down, uh, definitely one you want to have in your library or at least play once because seriously, uh, this game doesn't get enough recognition. Uh, one of my, probably my third favorite Metal Gear solid game in out of the series. Street Fighter Alpha in the Game Boy Color is something I thought that could never possibly happen, but it has. This is a two-button fighting game based off of the six-button fighting game in the arcade. The game plays surprisingly well. I mean, it, it, it's crazy. Um, special moves are there, super moves are there as well, and some combos are actually still there. It's just, it, I, I was pretty shocked, to be honest. Now, the game plays universal like any other fighting game. Like, you have your special moves, you could do circular motions, or, well, it, kind of, it might be hard on the, uh, kind of hard on the freaking game boy pad but still if you could pull it off you could pull off some really cool special moves a lot of the animations are still there from the arcade which is just I'm still like kind of kind of shocking to me i'm like man whoever developed this game man they really pulled it off man they did a really good job on this now i have to be honest street fighter alpha the first game is not really my favorite out of the alpha series i'm more of an alpha 3 guy so uh it would have been cool to see them pull it off on here but hey we got that on the game boy advance so the That'll be another video. But anyways, uh, like I said, this game is solid. Uh, definitely worth picking up if you see it. And plus, it has all the characters in it. You know, like, all the char no characters are missing. So that's always good, too. Ah, good old Magical Chase on the Game Boy Color. Now, this is a shoot 'em up They actually came out on the Turbo Graphics system. Um, very sought-after game uh, for that system. One of the more rare games. Uh, one of my friends, John Hancock, he actually got it. A complete copy around I think it was around a year ago so he's real happy and another one of my friends Andy from Super Smash got himself a copy as well so I said you know what it's time for me to grab a copy of the game so I picked up the Game Boy Color version because it was a lot cheaper but it still plays the same like the Turbo version which is cool 
what I really like about the game too is that you can uh, actually buy upgrades in a shop. Uh, now this game is in Japanese, so it's kind of hard to understand what you're you're buying. But you can look at the icons and tell, you know, certain things like there's certain like speed, uh, three way shot, things like that. Life, you know, it's you could understand it, but some people it might throw them off just a bit. But it's not hard at all. There is a fan translation that was made around a year ago, so uh, you can actually buy that, and it's a lot cheaper than buying the Japanese version. I think the, the just a cart only will probably go for like maybe 15 to 20 bucks. But as it stands, this is actually a really faithful port to the Turbo Graphics uh, version. Um, the only things I saw that were like downgraded is probably some some colors and things like that, the music a little bit, but it's it's really on par with that version, so. Um, I, I'm definitely not going to go out and get that the turbo version. I'm happy with this version right here. <laughs> but I really do feel this game is a gem to have on the Game Boy Color, seriously. Uh, sad it was not officially released in America, but I, could, I guess I could understand why, as with the turbo version, did not sell well at all. And we know typically when games don't sell well, you know, and they don't make that many copies of them out there. So uh, then sometimes later on they become rare. And that's pretty much what's what happened with the turbo version so in closing about this game guys magical chase for the game boy color a true hidden gem i like it a lot definitely something to pick up if you can afford it or if not you could get the reproduction version and enjoy that one in english so uh nothing much else to say about this game if you like magical chase and you're looking for a copy this might be the version to get so here we have an rpg Lufia The Legend Returns, uh, this is actually the third game in the Lufia series, and uh, Lufia always, to me, seemed underrated. It's it's never the RPG that people bring up, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of strange, you know, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's totally underrated, but a fantastic series. I've actually played the first two games, and this one, when I played it, I was like, wow, this is actually kind of cool. I didn't really think of it much of it, even though it's being the third game, being on the Game Boy Color, you know, I wasn't really expecting much, but... Uh, I was pretty surprised with it. Uh, the story starts out uh, strong in the beginning. You arrive on a continent and you go to this village and all of a sudden like an incident happens where a fire, like one of the houses burns down. And you have to go inside and rescue. I believe it's one of the villagers, a daughter or son. So what's interesting about this game, here's how the battle system works. You actually uh, have, can have nine characters in your party, but the front line are the characters that matter if the front line uh, gets killed then it's game over but surprisingly or not surprisingly this game actually has really good music um, the music is a uh, pretty on point I was actually like wow like amazed with it you know you don't really think that the Game Boy Color could do much with music but um, you're totally wrong if you think that seriously uh, whoever did the music for this game did a great job so I'm only a few hours into the game and Thank goodness this game is not a grind fest. You don't have to level up all crazy in this game, or it doesn't just take a, a, time, a long time to level up. Now, even though this is the third game in the Lufia series, uh, you, you don't need to play the first two to, uh, to enjoy this one. You can enjoy this one just the same. So just from where I started in this game and where I'm at right now, I could really tell the developers really put uh, some heart into the story. It's just not some generic story they just put together to kind of like make a cash grab. They actually did some character development and the story is just really interesting from what i read too guys the game takes around 20 hours to complete and maybe a little bit more around 31 hours if you want to get everything doing all the side quests honestly i think around 10 uh, man, i'm pushing okay let's i say 20 hours at the most for a portable rpg like this from back in the day but um you know, they added a lot of stuff to this game, so I guess it's fine that it's 30 hours. I uh, honestly think it's worth it. Mega Man Extreme. We're going to actually talk about both Mega Man Extreme games, but of course we're going to start with the first one. Uh, the first one actually takes place, I believe, a couple years after Mega Man X2 for the Super Nintendo. Now, I'm going to be completely honest about this game. Though I like the game a lot, it's pretty much... I would say a remake of the first Mega Man X game uh, with of course the story will tell you why it's kind of you're kind of going through the same events as the first game as you can see here the game has its own dedicated story and it, actually everything plays out nice what I like about these side type games is that it kind of flushes out the character development in the Mega Man X series um, I've always been a big Mega Man X fan so you know I always want to know as much as I can about the characters and how they get along with each other 
Now, when playing this game, the first thing you'll you'll you have to notice this because there's only two buttons on the Game Boy Color, and uh, that's gonna kind of conflict with your uh, dash move. So in this game, how you do it is you dash by pushing forward twice really fast, or you could push down and A. It, it's kind of weird because I'm used to using the, the dash jump in the um, regular X game, which is pretty much a, you push the. I think it's uh, A and B to, at the same time, and you do your dash jump, and it, it you know, it's just it's just like a super jump, pretty much. I'm, I'm used to using that, but in this game, I had to get used to doing things this way, which it, it's not a deal breaker or anything. You just got to really get used to it. Another cool feature about this game is that all the music, of course, is downgraded from the Super Nintendo version, but the, actually the mixes sound good for it. Uh, Storm Eagle was one of the stages I noticed the most, and uh, that everybody loves Storm Eagle's theme from Mega Man X1, so. You should, guys, you should also take a listen to this one. It's actually pretty cool. But now here we look at Mega Man Extreme Part 2. And this one is a lot better. Uh, and it definitely doesn't feel like a rehash of the first game. There's only one gripe that I had with this game, even though it's better than the first game, is that uh, you get to play as X or Zero, and they both fight different robot masters. But to, to truly beat the game, you have to play Extreme Mode, which you unlock by actually beating the game with X and Zero in their own separate games. I thought that was kind of weird because they only fight four robot masters each and then of course a later boss. But despite all that, Mega Man Extreme Part 2 is a, a whole lot of fun. Um, twice as much as the first game. And it, it really just kind of bridges the gap with a, a, a lot of the story uh, from before like after X3 to X4. So if you guys remember Iris from X4, she's actually in this game and there's a lot more character development between her and Zero. Now let's take a look at Classic Bubble Bobble for the Game Boy Color. This game is a pretty cool like follow-up to the regular Bubble Bobble series, but the only downfall this game has is can you imagine playing Bubble Bobble uh, with just one player? Yeah, well, what I mean by that is if you, if you remember playing Bubble Bobble back in the day, if you beat the game by yourself, there was no way you could get the, you could beat the game because uh, you needed two players to actually beat the game. So now they're giving us a bubble bobble that we can actually play and beat the game with as one player, which is kind of like I say it's kind of I feel like it's kind of too late for that. But I'm still because I still remember the issue that I had with the first game. How I was kind of annoyed that you couldn't beat the game with one player, especially when you go through almost all 99 levels. All right, I got that gripe out of the way. Uh, this turns out to be a very fun game. It's actually kind of cool. I like how the levels scroll. Um, because if you play the original Bubble Bobble games, they actually, it's just one screen that you're on that you see everything on. So this one's kind of like more of a Bubble Bobble adventure. The game has a little bit of story. Basically, uh, Bub is trying to uh, find a cure for Bob because he's actually sick. So he, that's the reason the game's not two players because he's sick and he's out. So you have to kind of go out and try to find some medicine for him, I believe. At least that's what I think. I can't remember. It's a simplistic story, of course. So it's something similar to that level. But a solid game that you guys will enjoy. And now we have our final game. And this is the game I've been waiting to tell you guys about. Hands of Time, think of Commando mixed with a little bit of Back to the Future. I know it sounds pretty insane, right? Well, this is what pretty much happens. So you play as Sebastian. He's a soldier and a son of a scientist, and he has to go back into the, the past to actually uh, change uh, history because what happens is there's a, a time machine that's made, and because of this machine, um, one country is actually has a lot of power over the other one. So uh, they're trying to go back and change that to stop this a certain war from happening. Um, right before uh, you go back in time, though, your uh, your father is uh, taken prisoner. So you have to find a way to save history and save your father. So good thing about this game is you have a health bar, so you can take more than one hit, which is great. You know, I, don't, I hate, I don't really, I don't like games that you get shot once and it's over. You know, I like for you, you to have like a power bar, but. Uh, you get upgrades and weapons too, so you have better weapons to use during the levels. Well, not levels, but I would say it was a more of a big area map, so that you kind of like unlock as you uh, you know go on. The game is actually really big on story, so there's a lot of cutscenes. But what's I and I'm gonna go ahead and say this about the game: the the way the dialogue is written kind of makes it hard to read. I mean, I don't know what it is, the fonts or the lettering. It just makes it real awkward to kind of read everything properly sometimes. But it's a solid game you guys should try out. Hey guys, well I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this video took a long time to do because actually the original video got erased and um, I was pretty disappointed and it took me a while to get back into the groove. So 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Actually, I have one more surprise for you guys before we go. Check this out. Dragon's Lair for the Game Boy Color. I threw this in just for the hell of it. I had just gotten this game right around the time I was ending this video and I decided to include it. I think this game is a hidden gem because it, of course it's uncommon, but man, seriously, this game deserves to be on this list because look at what this shows what the Game Boy Color could do. This is pretty amazing for the system. I mean, seriously, I don't know how powerful the Game Boy Color is, but I know it's probably maybe around the, the level of the NES or maybe above or maybe below, I don't know. But seriously, I mean, it shows what this system can do. I mean, this is almost damn near close to the arcade. Well, I shouldn't say close to the arcade, but you know, it does a good job. Now the game plays similar to the arcade, but it's slightly easier, slightly more difficult. Now, usually when you get to a room, you only have to do one command, a correct command to get out of that room instead of like a couple commands like in the regular arcade version. But in this version, if you mess up, they put you in a randomly different room afterwards so you don't get to repeat the same room over and over again to learn the pattern so they kind of switches things up so still very entertaining um i remember beating the sega cd version of this game back in the day i love this game still i was actually lucky to find an inbox copy of this game for the system so happy about that and very impressed at the same time this game doesn't play that well, even though it kind of does, kind of doesn't. I mean, the original never really put, played well. I mean, how are you supposed to know what to, to attack and where to go sometimes? You just have to use what you think is common sense in this game. You know, some things flash or whatever is obvious on screen. But a solid game that I think you guys should check out.